stereo, mid, side, width, imaging, pan laws, fake stereo, mono compatibility, thickness, all these terms. If you're like me when I first started out, these terms confuse the heck out of me. So to help you understand what these mean, today I'm gonna to show you five things you need to know about the world of stereo imaging and panning. Before we dive in, make sure you check out the free downloads in the description. There'll be heaps of samples, presets, and other resources for you. Surprise, surprise, our mixes aren't just one channel. We know that the left channel is what comes out of the left headphone or speaker, and the right channel is what comes out of the right headphone or speaker. But there's this whole concept of mid-side. How can I have mid-side channels if I've got a left channel and a right channel? Where does that all fit in? Well, it turns out the mid-channel is the similarities between the left and the right channels, and the side channel is the differences. And the side channel is what gives a song or a sample or a instrument that sprinkle of the stereo image that we all want to add into our mixes. And balancing both mid and side signal is what the art of mixing is all about. Now, mono sounds are described as powerful and punchy because their signal is shared by both speakers or headphones. So whereas stereo information or side information is the stuff you hear on the side that kind of adds detail. Now, too much of one over the other can result on in either a narrow, boring mix or conversely, a messy, all over the place mix. To use a chef's analogy, you want to balance the entrees, the side signal, with the main meal, the mid signal. Now, how can we listen to the mid and side in a sound? So I've got this chord example here. Very nice trippy sound that I made a while back. Uh, it's got a bit of stereo information in I know because I made this sound. But let's see how we can actually listen. Now I'm going to be using Ableton. You can do this with any plugin that allows you to separate the mid and side channels. In utility here, if you have the width knob, you can right click on it and enter into mid side mode. Now mid side mode, uh, essentially, well, if you have it all the way to the left here, it's 100% of the mid signal. And if you have it all the way to the right, it's 100% of the side signal. Let's give both of these a listen, starting with the mid signal. So right there, you'll be hearing what's coming out of both speakers out of the same. And let's listen to the side signal. That is the differences between the left and the right speakers, the interesting part of the mix or the sound. Now, one way I generally like to think about this is that you wanna have more mid than side signal and you wanna have less low end in the side signal because you can get what's called phase cancellation. Now this sounds pretty side heavy. So in practice, I would go ahead and actually adjust some things, which I'll be getting later into this video. So stick around for the whole thing. So now that we understand mid side, we can dive into the whole concept of mono compatibility. Now, if you have a whole mix, you have stereo side and mid information all there balancing, competing for space. However, if you're playing it on a club or on potentially different sound systems like in a car or a home stereo or whatever, there's the possibility that that system runs in mono. So what you need to do is check that the mid signal or the mono compatible signal comes through enough to represent the mix accurately. The way we can test this is by simply monoing or making only the mid channel audible and seeing if the mix still sounds good. To test this, I've got this little drum loop here. Let me just loop it up for us. Pretty nice garagey type loop with a bit of bass in there. So it's good, so got something we can test the low end, which is important to come through on mono compatible systems. So what we're gonna do here is we're going to do the same thing we did before, right click and enter mid side mode, and bring the mid channel down to 100%. And then let's listen to see how this sounds. Go back to normal. Now we lose that nice clarity in the top end, which is a bit of a shame, but we can still hear the bulk of the sound come through despite the fact that we've gotten rid of the side signals completely. To go back to that chef analogy, if you didn't have the entree, would the main meal be able to hold up on its own? Now it's worth mentioning that you can also just press the mono button and that does the exact same thing here. But that being said, most systems we'll use another kind of mono compatibility or mono monoizing, I guess you could say. That is going to be either solo left or solo right because on most channels, it's just taking one of the two 
either the left or the right channel and making that the mono signal. It's not actually doing any mono summing, which is what we're doing in Ableton here. So let's on the utility select the left channel here. So we're just going to be soloing the left and see how this holds up. So if we had the left channel plugged into a speaker system only and not the right, this is how it would sound. And it holds up pretty well, right? Uh, it's actually sounding better than the mono monoized version. So I actually am pretty happy with how that sounds, right? And then we can go back to stereo. That's how it would sound on a stereo system. Now this is very important in genres that are dance oriented like house, techno, uh, drum and bass, dubstep, varieties of bass music that want to be clear and cutting through on a big system, especially in the low end. It's good to test because also in clubs a lot of the time to save power, a lot of club systems will run in mono because it requires less sending of the signal of different signals. So it's a better deal for club owners. All right, tip number three is this whole concept of true panning and fake panning. Now, if you're like me, I had no idea what this meant when I first started out. I was like, isn't panning just panning? Well, turns out, no, panning is not just panning. And to demonstrate this, because I'm an Ableton user and a lot of you out there will also be, I'm going to show you something interesting what happens when you pan a stereo instrument like this piano I've got here. Let me just give you an example first. Nice, nice. So that's sounding good, but what happens if we wanted to say pan it to the left channel? Uh, so let's bring this say over here. Or say go to the right. Now you'll notice, depending on whether I pan it left or right, you'll hear there's drastic differences in the content of the sound. Now you'd think panning it would keep the frequencies that are both on the left and right and kind of push them to either side, but apparently Ableton does not do this by default. This is known as what's fake panning, and what's going on is instead of the left going towards the right channel, or vice versa, the left channel is just being brought down in volume and the right channel remaining as it is. This is a problem because if you have a nice instrument like a piano where you want to hear the keys and a microphone on one side of the piano is going to be in a very different position to the other side, you want to capture the full sound. Now we can solve this uh, by using what's called true panning. Now a lot of doors such as Logic Pro X actually do this by default, which is great. But if you're in Ableton, it is not the case. So what you can do is you can right click on this and select the split stereo pan mode, which is a feature they introduced in Live 10, I believe. And clicking on this will bring up this left and right panning option. Now, this gives us split pan control for both the left and the right channel, meaning I can pan the left all the way to the right if I want. I can pan the right into the center, etc. Now, if we were to uh, say pan this left channel over to zero, which is the center, center there, so yeah, you see the C, it would be akin to using a door that had true panning built into it natively, unlike Ableton and it would be sitting around this 25 right mark, right? This is basically what we would be getting if we we're using a normal pan slider. And we could do the same by bringing this all the way back and then bringing this one into the center instead, we'd be getting something around 25 left. And this gives you a lot more control for what you can do with the stereo information in your sound without just turning any of it down. You're keeping all the information there, which is great. Now, depending on the context in which you're doing panning, either or can be an appropriate tool. For example, a piano where I'm wanting to keep the sound of it intact, stereo split panning is probably gonna be the best option here. Whereas if I have this snare, for example, which I'll just play now, where it does have a bit of stereo information, but it's not super important, Fake panning is probably a fine option to use. I'm 90% sure that fake panning uses less CPU, but don't quote me on that. That's just a theory I have because of the way it looks and uses the signal processing. So we know the difference between true panning and fake panning. Let's look at how we actually can get stereo information in the first place. Now, traditionally, recordings would use left and right microphones to capture the sounds in different ways, different positions in the room, different positions in relation to the instrument would capture different subtle nuances in the sound, giving it this full stereo information like we were listening to it in the room itself. Now we can't always do that in the, in the door. 
So what can we do to add stereo information in artificially or manually? Well, I've got this sound here, which I recorded, which is literally just me speaking. Yeah. Uh, let's go. So there's a few different effects processing techniques you can use in order to get a nice wide sound. The first of which I like to call the Haas effect. The Haas effect is basically just a short delay between the left and the right channels that push one back further to give it a bit of a difference in the time it reaches our ears. It sounds like this. Yeah. Ah, uh, let's go. You could use a ping pong delay which echoes off the left and right channels. Yeah. Ah. Uh, you can use a reverb which uses an algorithm slightly differently for the left and right channels giving it a natural room feel. Yeah. Ah. Uh, Let's go. Uh, we've got serum effects here to demonstrate the option of a hyper or a detune unison effect. This is common on synthesizers, but you can use the hyper module here on serum to give it that nice thick detune sound. This is basically taking different pitches and layering them closely together, but slightly over the stereo spectrum. And it sounds like this. Yeah. Ah, uh, let's go. Similar to a chorus, which is what I'll be getting into in a second. Uh, you've got these modern stereo images like Ozone Imager 2, which use their algorithms to add some nice mono compatible stereo width, which is a very good concept to understand. Yeah. Ah, uh, let's go. Very subtle. You've got things like chorus, also phases and flanges function very similarly, which use short delays to create this thick sound. Yeah. Ah, uh, let's go. Very nice. And lastly, one of my favorite yet most underrated, I reckon, uh, techniques is dual mono EQing, which in which you EQ the left and the right sides of the um, sound differently to get a bit of difference in the stereo image. To hear what I mean, let me just play this for you. Yeah. Uh, let's go. Very, very, very subtle there, which I really like. If there's anything I didn't mention here to add stereo width into a mono sound, leave me a comment below and other people will be able to use that one too. Lastly, we've got this whole concept of now that we've got stereo information in a sound and we've got a stereo sound, how do we control what's already there? This sound up here had a mono only signal, so we didn't have any stereo to work with, but what about a sound that already has something there? I'll play this vocal because we've got this stereo uh, information in this. Oh. No sleep. Now, sometimes there is just a bit too much or a bit too little or not quite the right type of stereo information in a sound that we can go and tweak. Now, there's a few ways we can do this. The first and foremost way I would recommend is just simply balancing the level of the side channel. Now, a plugin like Ableton's Utility does this pretty well with just this width knob. This is before you right click and press mid side. You can actually uh, decrease it to fully mono by going 0%. Uh, between 100% and 0% will actually do a reduction in the side channel. So if we bring this down. Oh, no sleep. Full mono. Oh. And then we bring it up slightly again. And then going up over 100% increases the loudness of the stereo image. Oh, no sleep. Which gives us a bigger, wider sound depending on what we're going for. Now, apart from just turning it up and down though, there's a number of ways we can process this side signal. For example, a common thing would be mid side EQing, which I'm gonna do in Pro-Q3 here. I've actually taken out some of the low end and boosted some of the top end here to give it a bit more of a bright sound. Oh. I'm gonna bring up the side signal here so we can hear what's going on. Bring it up a bit more there. Take out some of these more lows. Pretty cool. We can also do um, side compression. I'm using FabFilter Pro Seed 2 here on the side stereo link option, meaning we can control the dynamics of just the stereo information, making the sides more present in our mix, which is really cool. Really cool effect there. Um, and you can also do any amount of processing, even just by adding like some stereo distortion. I've used FabFilter Satin here to do that, add some nice clean tube to just the side channel. We can listen to this with the mid there as well. Oh, no 
sleep. Really, really cool effect overall. And that's a number of ways in which you can control the stereo information. Of course, you can use the split stereo pan mode in order to move it around the stereo field. Uh, but that's just a few ways in which you can control it. It's important to control it because, as I said, getting that balance between mid and side is the key to a good mix. Now, if you're interested in these kind of more advanced mixing techniques, uh, make sure to check out our course mixing for producers. It's closed for enrollment at the moment, but it'll open up uh, later in the future. So you can sign up for the waiting list down below. It's got heaps of builds from professional level artists across multiple different genres. So you don't want to sleep on this. Well, that's it for today. I hope you learned something from one of these five tips on stereo imaging. If this helped you in any way, shape or form, just give it a like it really helps this video get shown to other producers and also stay around and subscribe for more content from myself luca and the rest of the edm prod team we're always uploading new stuff and i've got something special coming at the end of this week so stay tuned for that and lastly go check out the free downloads page if you haven't already but i will see you in the next one until then have a great day